Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Living Your Best Life. I'm Coach Adamir, and today we're going to be talking about stress. Yay! We love stress, right? <laughs> all right, listen, I know stress is something that we all deal with, and sometimes it's like we'll never catch a break to feel less stressed or not stressed at all. So while we do deal with things that are out of our control, sometimes there are ways to minimize or avoid the stress altogether. Okay, we just have to know how to recognize the stress and then have strategies to cope with it. Okay, stress can have a huge and significant impact on not only your mental health, but also your physical health. So whether you're trying to improve your mental health or you're looking to make some changes in your physical appearance, learning how to deal with stress will help you achieve your goals much, much quicker and will definitely lead to a better quality of life. So first things first, what is stress? All right, we all know what it is as far as experiencing it and dealing with it. So definition here, it's a state of mental or emotional strain resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. So yes, we all know what that is. We've all dealt with it, right? We all deal with stress in our own ways as well. And then we all have different types of stress that we deal with in our lives. So my stress is going to be different than yours. Yours is going to be different than your neighbors. We're all going to deal with things differently. And we're all going to have different things arise in our life that we need to know how to deal with. All right, and what we typically deal with is something that's called invisible stress. There's two types of stresses. There's visible stress, and that's the obvious ones that we all see. You know, you're stuck in traffic and you just want to get home. Someone cuts you off and it, it just stresses you out or annoys you or, or triggers you and then you just get angry, right? Or you, maybe you have kids and they're crying at 2, 3 in the morning and you can't go to sleep. Or you work um, in an office and you have a huge presentation tomorrow that you're just stressing out about. It makes you nervous, right? You have people that you have to present to who are gonna basically critique your work. That's stressful, right? That's our visible stress. The one we don't really see is our invisible stress. And that's what quietly does that work, that dirty work beneath the level of awareness. So we don't even know we're dealing with it sometimes. What happens is we just react, right? We react out of that stressor, not knowing that something just stressed us out. All right, so that's kind of what I want to dive into today is the invisible stressors that we deal with um, because those can really add up and make you feel like you, I don't know, maybe just crawled out like of a, a, lion, a lion's den and you just completely freaked out and stressed and somehow you made it out alive. So that's how those invisible stresses can make us feel sometimes. You know, you're left wondering why you feel so crummy, so drained, so fatigued or so irritated or, or easily upset. Sometimes we just don't know and we're like, why am I feeling this way? Invisible stress, All right? There's five different ones that I'm gonna talk about right now. I'm, I know there's a lot, a lot more that we can go over, but these are the five big ones that I think most people deal with. Um, and what these can do is it can wear away at your health and your well-being, All right? So I'm gonna go over them today. I'll talk about them. I'll show you how to recover from them. Um, I'll show you signs that maybe you are dealing with that. Um, and then as far as recovering from them, you'll be able to just have more energy, more wisdom, and more resilience in your life in dealing with these things. The first stressor is information overload and filter failure. So information overload, that's basically the ability that technology has given us to have everything at our fingertips, right? And technology has given us many, many great things, but it's a double-edged technological gift, and that's because it gives us an overabundance of information. All right, and a lot of us have jobs that require us to be on the computer at all times, or constantly be going through emails or video calls, or in a like a forum, like a chat messaging thread or something. You're always constantly bombarded with messages from technology, right? And then on top of that, once we're done with work, we go home, or we're on a lunch break, or whatever that may be. We have some free time. We fill that free time with more technology in the form of social media, maybe watching YouTube videos, online shopping. I know that's a big one too, right? So not only do we have technology at work, at, at school, or in our everyday lives to help us with what we need as far as work or um, things at home, but we also have it to entertain us and kind of let us zone out in a sense. Right. So what we're realizing is that information overload really isn't the problem. All right. We're realizing that the problem is 
we're not filtering out the information that we're inputting into our minds and in our, our hearts. Okay, we don't filter out junk. We just absorb, 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 absorb. And then that gets stressful because there's so many things in our head that most of the time are unnecessary. All right, so without the skill of consciously choosing where to place our attention, it gets yanked away like leaves in the wind. We're constantly being bombarded with uh, messages here, someone calling us over here, a text message, an email, or something pops up on TV that you're just like, I'm gonna watch that now. Right, we're constantly being pulled in a hundred different directions because of the advent of technology. Right, so what we need to do is identify what matters most in this present moment and switch our focus to those priorities, right? So for me, if, if I'm getting prepared for my podcast or if I have to sit and record or rehearse or whatever it is, and I have to make that matter the most in this moment, right? There's lots of other things that are gonna be going on in my life right now that I need to also pay attention to, but right now this is priority. Once this is done, I can move to the next um, lit task on my priority, priority list. Okay, so we have to be able to identify that. We have to be able to filter out the things that aren't serving us at that time so that we don't give ourselves undue stress. And as much as this is, quote unquote, an invisible stressor, for the most part, we bring this upon ourselves by not giving ourselves limits on our social media time or our, our TV time. Okay, so there's... There's several different signs that shows that you're suffering from this stressor or that someone you know is suffering from this. So if you can identify this in yourself or other people, we can start helping them out. We can start helping you out. All right, the first one is you feel tired and edgy after spending time on the internet or reading or catching up on the news. Right? It's stressful to hear the news and hear that all the, all the bad that's happening in the world. Most of the time when we watch the news or read it, it's never a positive happy headline right it's always something tragic it's always something bad happening it's always getting worse nothing is ever getting better when we look at the news so that makes us feel tired that that gets us on edge we start to feel anxious it, and then we start to stress out all right other things you don't spend as much time on your health your fitness or your life goals because you're getting distracted by what's going on on the internet or on YouTube or a latest Netflix show, i.e. Squid Games. <laughs> no offense if you watched it. I know I. everyone says I should watch it. I do want to watch it. But again, it's about prioritizing what's really important in your life. You know, for me, of course, I love to be entertained. I'll watch Squid Games and I'll, I'm pretty sure I'll enjoy it. But I won't enjoy it if I haven't gotten the things that I need to get done, done. Right? You have to prioritize. You have to not give yourself undue stress. Okay. Another one that's really popular, I think a lot of us do, um, you find yourself somewhere in an information ocean, not really sure how you got there. Most of us would consider that going down the rabbit hole. Right. You go on one YouTube video, you like it, the next one pops up, and it just keeps suggesting more and more and more and more till you're half an hour, 45 minutes in, and you don't even remember what the first video was that you watched, All right? So going down the rabbit hole is also a sign that we're suffering from this because we don't know how to stop, All right? And then speaking of not knowing how to stop, the idea of even taking a break, like a, a, a social media break scares you, All right? A lot of us, when we say, hey, you know, maybe you should take a break from social media for a week, we freak out. It's like, oh my God, they're taking away air or food. We've gotten so attached to it that taking a break from it is frightening that's not good right we we shouldn't have such an emotional attachment to social media to our digital devices as much as they're helpful and beneficial in our lives we have to be able to filter out what isn't beneficial all right and then if you struggle like knowing where to put your attention because again, you're, you're getting pulled in a hundred different directions. That's another indication that you're suffering from information overload, right? It all just feels like it's too much. Right? We don't want to feel like that. We don't want to feel like we're overwhelmed with information. We want to intake the information that's necessary and relevant to what we're doing. All right. So if you're suffering from this, here's a few things that you can do to help you 
recover from that or to start um, coping with that stress. First, create a focus filter, right? This will allow you to consciously choose where you want to place your attention, right? So spend time thinking about what's important to you, what really matters to you. Do you value time with your family? Do you, and do you enjoy taking walks or, or exercising and working on your, on your physical health? Do you enjoy reading or, or writing or drawing or something that stimulates your brain? Right? Once you know what's truly important to you, spend your time and energy on that. Like I mentioned earlier, I, of course I want to watch Netflix and, and catch up on the latest movies or, or fun shows you know, that I can talk about with friends and family or clients. But what's truly important to me right now is this podcast, is you know, building my brand and, and you know, coaching my clients through their nutrition and through their uh, physical progress. That's what's important to me. My, my family, you know, my home life, Audrey, my dog Jeffrey, those, those are the things that are important to me. So I push my attention and focus my attention on what matters. So ask yourself those questions about what's important in your life. Once you find that out, it, it becomes so much easier to just be so laser focused on it. All right, so spend your time finding your identity and finding what you value. All right, when you say yes to what you value, it becomes a lot easier to say no to things that are gonna waste your time, okay? Second stressor, toxic positivity. That sounds like a oxymoron, right? But this is basically the idea of always thinking positive no matter what, in the face of stress, or in the face of uh, conflict or, or tragedy or danger, whatever, right? There's, there's always good in finding the silver lining in something bad, of course. However, that, that can also be very detrimental, all right? If, if we, <laughs> there's that popular meme right now where the dog's sitting at the table and the whole house around him is on fire and you just see him sitting there, everything's fine, it's fine, I'm fine. That's what toxic positivity is, all right? It's counterproductive, it's harmful. If he's sitting there and the house is burning down around him and you keep saying it's fine, you're eventually gonna burn down with the house, okay? When your positivity isn't authentic, it's actually gonna intensify the stress that we feel. All right? We can't always just say it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. There's a difference between saying it's fine and dealing with the problem at hand and saying it's fine and just ignoring the problem because you're just saying it's fine, all right? Putting an everything's fine label over everything is gonna block us from recognizing the problems and it's gonna stop us from solving them. So we have to see the negative in a negative situation while still being positive that we can come out of that negative situation, okay? That's the difference in just, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, or I'm gonna be fine this is how I'm going to be fine. So a couple signs um, to show that you're suffering from this. It's going gonna, it's gonna to lead you to stagnation. All right? When you're not moving through your challenges with courage, with vulnerability, and not accepting that it's affecting you, and you're stuck in that everything is okay mentality, I don't have to deal with it, that's what's going to keep you stunted. It's going gonna, it's gonna to stagnate you. You can't grow unless you recognize a problem. All right? And if you notice you're stuck then try to find way out, try to find ways out of it right you need to permit yourself to experience the difficult emotions right you need to experience the anger experience the grief right once once you repress those negative emotions you're going to feel it in other ways in your body it's going to manifest in different ways in your life you're going to have muscle tension right sometimes we we talk about feeling stress in our shoulders and our back and our neck or we get headaches and things like that or the bottles of alcohol disappear, right? We, we cope by escaping into our drinks or escaping with other drugs or maybe, right? We repress those emotions and then they, they come out at us with a vengeance, all right? And then we also have basically like disproportionate fits of anger, right? Let's say you're, you're, uh, you're late for work and you can't find your keys. You, you start to stress out because you're late and then you start to get angry because you're stressing out, right? So 
those are things that you can notice that you're suffering from stress that's underlying okay so try to stay away from that toxic positivity of just labeling everything's okay we have to deal with things we can't just repress them and hope that things are going to get better or because it's no longer on the surface i don't have to deal with it okay there's other other um signs here that you're dealing with toxic positivity in your life maybe you feel guilty or ashamed whenever you experience a negative emotion like frustration or sadness like you feel oh my life is okay i shouldn't be upset about this you still need to feel something right you still need to be upset about something it's okay or you feel uncomfortable when people around you are suffering so you tell them or you say things to yourself you know just look on the bright side because you don't know how to help them and you don't know how to deal with it yourself. So you always just want to look on the bright side. That's not going to solve our problems or your problems. All right. And if you're suffering from this, here's a couple of ways to recover. First, pay full attention to your emotions. All of them. The good ones, the bad ones, the happy ones, the sad ones, whatever. Pay attention to them completely and fully. Okay, when you notice a negative emotion, identify it, name it, right? And you start to feel angry or upset, I feel angry. You know, when you start to feel lonely, you're, you feel lonely right now. Acknowledge it, accept it, and then you're able to deal with it, all right? If you notice a feeling of restlessness, um, maybe your, your jaw starts to clench up when you feel something or your, your body starts to get all hot, those are um, signs that we're dealing with um, stress at the, at the underneath the level of awareness because we're just reacting to it okay so feel your emotions experience your emotions and you'll be able to deal with them and then move past that and not have those stressors in your life all right and then one other thing you can do is be curious about your emotions right what is that emotion trying to tell you and i i've started to do that in my life where you know, something or someone or something will just irritate me and, and start to get me upset. So I, I pause, I take a step back and I ask myself, why am I getting so upset or frustrated? What is it about this situation that's frustrating me? 98 to 99% of the time, it's nothing. It's something else. Or maybe I'm just tired or maybe something else earlier bothered me and I didn't deal with it. Well, I just asked myself what the problem was, so now I can deal with it, right? If your emotion had a voice, what would it tell you? What would it say is the real problem, right? If you can welcome that feeling as a necessary and normal part of your life experience, it's not going to be good or bad for you. It's just going to be a way to cope and deal with what you're dealing with, all right? Third one, this is a, a, a big one, or... I don't want to say big one, but this is one that um, I can kind of relate to at times. Uh, excess noise, right? So like your, your neighbor's leaf blower, if you live in a neighborhood with, um, you know, lawns and people around you that, that garden and things like that. So lawn equipment, um, car alarms, uh, barking dogs, right? Any other noise that could just be annoying. Loud neighbor's music playing. Um, you're just at home trying to chill and across the street you hear loud 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 music that you don't even like it can get really stressful i've i've been there there's neighbors here you know on sundays i'm pretty sure it's every sunday um you know they play loud music and it's across the street and i can hear it when my windows are closed it's crazy it's stressful so i have to turn up the volume on my TV or my music or just put headphones on, right? It makes us annoyed. It can, it can make us anxious. It can even make us angry at times because we're wondering why the hell are they being so loud, right? You can trigger that body-wide response or almost like a fight or flight. Like you're just, ah, I got to do something. <laughs> um, and that's because we're, we're equipped to process all that sensory stimuli. We're well equipped to, to hear it and process it, right? We know what it is. We know that if if you have kids or if you have a baby and they start crying we have to pop up and be attentive what do they need what's going on or if 
you, you hear an alarm or a fire alarm, you, you know you have to jump up into action, whatever that may be. Go look to see what's going on. We're able to interpret those sounds and react the way we need to, right? But when that set, that noise, that uh, sound information becomes overwhelming and we're, our ability to process it is no longer there, it becomes a stressor, right? That leaf blower across the street and you're trying to read, yes, you know it's a leaf blower, but there's nothing for you to do to react to that noise, right? Like, like with the baby, you got to go do something, feed it, change it, you know, pick it up, burp it, something. With a leaf blower, it's like, it's just constant noise that won't stop until they are done. So there's nothing really you can do about it. All right. And, and that happens a lot. We have constant noise sometimes when you're trying to finish an assignment, or maybe you're trying to take up a meditation practice. And every time you sit to meditate, everything makes noise around you, right? Even the smallest sound will set you off. Okay. So if you are suffering from this, there's feelings of overstimulation, basically, or you feel uncomfortable in environments that other people may even find relaxing, right? You go to a restaurant and the chatter of the dining room is irritating you. You feel like these people are being too loud or you're in a doctor's waiting room and the tap of a pen or someone's foot tapping on the ground starts to irritate you. Those are noise stressors, right? Those are indications that you're suffering from that right or you're the type of person who avoids certain environments like airports or malls right because you don't want to be in a crowded environment you don't want to go to that basketball game because there's going to be so many people there right you won't be able to handle all that commotion okay and then you may even have other um sensory sensitivities right like you reject food based on taste or texture i know people that don't like eggs because it feels weird in their mouth fine, I get it. You may have other sensory issues as well, right? Or if you have a new t-shirt or new pants and the tag like rubbing on your skin just irritates the hell out of you and you just rip it off. Those are sensory um, stressors, all right? And if you are dealing with that, here's a couple things that you want to consider to try to cope with it or recover from that. Ask yourself two questions. First, how might you turn down the volume on those sounds, right? Could you maybe close your windows more, maybe have um, one of those blackout drapes, right, that also block out noise. Um, if, if you have the means to and you live in a home and you're starting to renovate, get double pane windows, right? You know, so you can filter out that extra noise. Or if you're working at, on an assignment or if you're trying to meditate or if you're just trying to read and your neighbor decides today's a good day to, um, mow their lawn and you know do the leaf blowing and all that stuff then wear noise canceling headphones right while you're doing all that find ways to put yourself in environments that that you're not stressed out by sound or noise and maybe you can even talk to your neighbors about those quiet hours if you know that every morning or every saturday and sunday morning you're gonna wake up around eight and meditate for half an hour then ask your neighbors like hey can if you don't mind can we start can you start your um, your housework after 9 a.m. Whatever, you know, work with your neighbors. Neighbors are friendly for the most part, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> Only one side of our neighbors is friendly. But anyways, second thing you can do is how can you invite more quiet in your life? Right, so how can you make time for that? First, schedule it. Right? If you have a 9 to 5 and you go to lunch at 12 or 1 o'clock, schedule also a five to 10 minute walk after your lunch or um, five, 10 minute quiet time so that you can just sit in silence, put your phone away, sit on a park bench and just stare off into space, All right? Give yourself that mental break. Um, if, you're, if you have a park on, the, on your commute home or a nice quiet place that you can park, pull out of the car and just sit for 10 minutes before you get home, do that, All right? Release the stresses of work so that you can go home and not be stressed out by the noises that will happen at home. If you have kids and you're stressed out from the day, it would probably be a good idea to take a 10 minute break on the way home to rest, give yourself some me time in a sense, and then come home and not be stressed out by your kids bombarding you and 
talking about their day and asking you this and asking you that. You want to be able to be fully present for your family. All right. And another thing you can do is, is read, um, listen to an audiobook or a podcast, draw, uh, find a hobby that you can fill your time with, right? Get, get creative so that you won't be as stressed out by a little bit of noise, by the dog barking across the street or the kids playing outside, right? Those aren't, those, those shouldn't stress us out. Those are just normal sounds that happen in our everyday life. So being stressed out by sounds like that shows that we have other things that we need to deal with first. All right. Number four, emotional labor. Um, think customer service or face to face with the public, right? All day long, if you work in that environment, you have to care about the minor concerns of those customers, whether they're right or wrong. It doesn't matter. You have to care, right? You have to quote unquote, pretend to care. And even when they're rude, offensive, irritable, completely mean, you still need to stay pleasant and stick to the, the corporate script, I guess, of apologizing to them and, and making them feel like they're the most important person in that moment, even though whatever it is that happened isn't your fault or you had nothing to do with it, right? I've been there. I worked retail for five years and I gotta tell you, there were so many problems that I dealt with that I just, it's not even my problem, man. But I can tell you that it's extremely stressful to have to put on that happy face for those people all day, all right? And customer service employees aren't the only people to deal with this. Nurses deal with it, therapists, coaches, um, coaches of, of teams especially, and individual coaches, um, veterinary technicians, right? Shout out to uh, my fiance, Audrey. They, you know, they, they deal with so much stress and they have to put on this happy face and, and still care about your animals while rude clients don't want to accept responsibility for what's going on with their pets, right? So, you know, if you're a parent and you have kids, we deal with those, um, that emotional labor as well, where kids are screaming and yelling and mad at us for no reason. So, we all deal with it in some form or another. And no matter what kind of day you're having, you, know, you still need to be caring and cheerful at work and, and put on that face. And a lot of times that happens at the expense of their own mental health. You know, they, they put aside their own feelings and emotions to deal with everyone else. And that can not only be really stressful, but really detrimental to your mental health, right? And th that's emotional labor that we put people through a lot. And if you're, de if you're on the inside and you're dealing with that emotional labor, I, I promise you, if, if you find ways to cope with it and, you know, not let those um, stresses really affect you, it, your outside life and your home life will be much better. All right. I, it, it can be exhausting, right? It's almost as exhausting as like laying bricks on a hot summer day. It's, it's not a physical feat of labor that you're doing in these types of jobs, but it can be just as exhausting mentally and physically. All right. So if we don't account for this emotional labor and try to recover, we typically get burned out. We all know what that is. We all have dealt with burnout in our lives and it's, with no fun, all right? So if you're suffering from this, um, or if, if you don't know that you're suffering from this, here's a couple things that will help you recognize it. If you feel like you have to put on a fake smile in order to not provoke coworkers or not to be told you have RBF, resting bitch face, I'm, I'm sure a lot of us have heard that. I know I've heard that before. You know, you have to fake that smile so that you don't get insulted or people don't, um, people aren't mean to you, that's, that's a sign you're suffering from emotional labor. All right. If, if you work in a profession that you have to conceal your own emotions, like healthcare, law, customer service, social work, yes, coaching. Sometimes we have to conceal what we're going through to prioritize our client at the moment. 
right? They're the most important person for that time. So we have to put our stuff on the back burner, okay? If you feel exhausted at the end of the day, because um, you're dealing with cranky people, as an example, children or teenagers, so if you're a parent or a teacher and or a caregiver and you feel exhausted at the end of the day because of that, that's emotional labor, okay? So if, if you are recognizing that, I'll give you ways to recover, all right? And if you're the uh, um, a parent in the household maybe that is always breaking up fights or is always playing keys, peacekeeper or is always trying to appease everyone in the house, you're ignoring your own feelings and your own emotions. So that is also emotional labor, okay? So how to recover first and only, <laughs> where can you find that emotional rest? So first, create boundaries between home and work, all right? Don't check your emails at home. Once you get home, if you're home at five or six, then cut it off, put your phone away. If you have a work phone or, or whatever, put that away. Spend time with your family, spend time with your kids, spend time with yourself if that's what you need to do. Okay, unwind from the day, all right? And if you're that peacekeeper in the house, talk with your family and tell them you're not gonna do that anymore, right? Solve your own problems, unless it's a big problem that you absolutely need me, I'll be there. But, you know, if you're upset that your brother took your toy or they're taking too long in the shower, you guys figure it out, okay? It's, it's you have to, you have to be at your best self so that you can, be your best self for everybody else, all right? Um, you can also schedule a, a five minute break into your day, into your day, right? To take a short walk or a short meditation, a short breathing exercise, um, like breathing techniques, five minute breathing techniques. Like I have, a, I have an Apple watch and on the watch, there's an option for um, what's called mindfulness. You know, you set a timer three, four, five minutes and it takes you through a short breathing exercise. I try to do that once a day, three minutes. It's not a lot, but it helps, I promise you, all right? And um, if you have a friend or family member or if you have a therapist that can relate to you or that you can talk to and understand your struggles, talk to them, all right? Always have people to talk to. And then at the end of it all though, do what works best for you, all right? If taking a five minute break and just taking a walk helps every day, do that. If you need to talk to somebody and get your emotions out, do that. Do what works for you, but do something. Okay. Don't just, don't just try to repress and push back all that stress because we all know that repressed stress comes back with a vengeance, right? So don't do that, please. <laughs> all right. Last one here, guys, microaggressions. Um, we probably haven't heard of this before, but we probably have seen it and know what it is. We've just never heard it be called microaggressions. And what those are, they're small, they're often subtle, but they're everyday statements or actions that communicate hostile, derogatory, or negative attitude towards someone. So as an example, um, you know, if you're Hispanic or if you're Asian American or if you're African American, if you're not from here in America in a sense, right? You get that question, where are you really from? Right, I, I get that a lot, like, well, where were you born though? I was born here, Los Angeles, California, United States, right? It, a lot of people mean well, they don't know they're doing that, but you know, I'm really from here, <laughs> okay? You know, if, if you're, a, again, a minority and you're walking down the street and someone's walking by and they, you know, grab their kids closer to them or, you know, they clutch their purse a little tighter that's a microaggression, right? If you're a person of color and you see that, that's a microaggression towards you because of your race or skin color. It has nothing to do with you. Or if you're disabled and you need help and you get ignored, that's also a microaggression that, again, nobody is really doing on purpose, but they can chip away at us, okay? Um, and a lot of us may not even experience it experience this so we're, we're fortunate for the most part that not all of us have to deal with it but if you have you know that it can sting like real bad you're like you don't even realize that it hurts and it's like what how how is that hurting me so much 
right? And it, it's because it builds over time and it, it wears us down when we constantly see it or hear it or experience it, okay? So we have to deal with it, right? We can't just tell ourselves to suck it up or that we shouldn't be bothered by it. It's okay to be bothered by it, right? Because if we don't, if we don't deal with it, we can make the stress a lot worse. It's, it's going to backfire on us. Okay, so deal with it. And if you are, again, suffering from something like this, um, you may be the type of person who maybe continuously braces for impact, right? Waiting for the next insult to come your way. It's like you're expecting it. You're just like, oh, here, what's going to happen today? You know, who's going to say something shitty to me today? Right. Or you, you feel exhausted, too. Like if, you know, doing something different just feels like a chore. You're exhausted from all of it. Or you become suspicious of people around you, even if they have good intentions. Right. You're just you have like a, a almost like a chip on your shoulder to be like, no, I'm, I'm not going to trust this person until forever. <laughs> right. Or I'm not going to trust these people. Right. You mistrust an entire group of people because of one situation or because of something you've heard or because of how you've been treated by that group of people. So those are signs you're suffering from microaggressions and, and you may not even realize it until you start to um, pay attention to them, right? So how do I recover from microaggressions? Micro power. And that's taking small actions on your own behalf to resist the feeling of being beaten down by your circumstances, right? So resist the woe is me attitude, basically. Um, you know, the, the world isn't against you. We do feel like that sometimes, but we can't, we, we have to take that power within ourselves to not feel that the world is against us, to understand that things just happen. And we have to be able to cope with it, right? And ways you can do that, find a, a group, find communities, find a space or friends who understand your specific struggle. And talk with people that have dealt with the same things that you've dealt with and find out how they got past it. And if they haven't got past it, maybe you guys can work together on ways to get past it. But at least you have someone as a support system, all right? And if you're able to in that moment when someone asks you a question and you know that's a microaggression, what do you mean by that? Put them on the spot. Hey, where, where are you really from? Where were you born? What does that mean? Why are you asking me that? Right? Put that person on the spot so that they understand that they're being aggressive. Okay? And then also discern and prioritize, right? Is this, is this really the battle you want to fight right now? Or... Is it like, is it even worth it? You know, sometimes you can just let them brush off and not be affected by it because you know that you shouldn't be affected by something. Okay. And, and the way to do that is practicing aggressive self-care. Always, always be caring for your brain. Always be caring for your heart. Always be caring for what you're feeding yourself men, um, yeah, mentally and physically. Right. Feeding yourself based on the books you read, the shows you watch, the content you absorb. So that's, that's aggressive self-care, taking care of yourself so that you are equipped with the strength to deal with whatever is thrown at you. All right. And if you're in a safe environment, again, call them out, right? If they say something that you don't like being called, tell them, don't call me that. Don't talk to me that way. You can't say that to me anymore. You can't speak to me that way. Care for yourself, stand up for yourself so that you don't have to suffer through those microaggressions all the time, all right? But, you know, have that experience with others and, and build something out of that. You know, create something out of that. Don't, don't come out of these situations um, without having learned something either, all right? So build something out of your experience, and hopefully that will help benefit others who may also go through what you just went through, all right? So for all this, um, essentially what we're, what we're trying to accomplish is 
less stress and more recovery. Okay, when you recognize these hidden stressors in your life, you're going to have a better chance of being able to take these empowered steps and, and recover from these stressors. Okay, so like think of, think of a tank, right, um, filled with water. And if there's a leak in it, you know, that, that's our stress, basically. We have a, a slow leak of stress. We have to fill that tank with recovery practices, self-care, meditation, reading, um, you know, taking walks, exercising. Doing things to help us manage our stress and, and fill up our tank is going to help us cope with the stress leaks that have that occur in our lives all right and listen as much as we all want to and as much as i would love for it to be the case we're not going to be able to eliminate stressors completely all right but by slowing the leak uh, and and filling our tank with recovery we can feel a little bit more equipped for life well there you have it you guys stress how to identify it how to deal with it I sincerely hope this helps you out and that you can start managing your stress a little better each day. Just remember, you guys, you'll never not have stress in your life, okay? You can always be ready to cope with it and find ways to relieve it, but it's always going to be there, unfortunately. We just can't see it as a bad thing always, all right? Um, you know, a lot of times our, our stress comes from how we react to a situation as well. So... Just make sure you're always on top of your emotions. You're asking yourself, why am I acting this way? Why is this irritating me? Why is this bothering me? Right? Why, what is making me feel this way? If we can remain on top of our emotions, we can deal with things in a healthy manner. All right? And when we have less stress in our lives, we can show up to others as our best selves so that we can always be there for our friends and family and the ones that we love as well. Okay? So thanks... Thanks again for listening. Um, I really, really, really do appreciate it. Um, the ones I know personally that are listening to this, I thank you. And the ones that I may not know, I think there's a couple of you that I don't know. Um, thank you. I really do appreciate it. So I hope you're getting something from it and you're learning and you're enjoying the content. Um, just don't forget to share it you know, with friends or family. Leave a review if possible if there's things you want to hear. Message me on Instagram or Twitter. You can find me at Coach Adamir. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what you want to hear, what you want to learn, um, so that I can prepare for that as well. Okay, I want to help you out as much as I possibly can. Um, right, I, I want everyone to live stre not stress-free, but uh, with minimal stress and uh, with ways to cope with it. Okay. Um, Next week's nutrition, so I'm looking forward to that. I hope you're looking forward to it. Stay tuned for that. Again, sign up for the podcast so you get an alert when there's new episodes. I try to release them every Monday. Um, lately, I've I've been pretty good about it. I want you guys to start your week off right, so I try to release them Monday mornings as early as possible. All right. As always, my friends, have a wonderful week. Love yourself and go be the best version of yourself. Bye.